Hello, everybody. This is Gold League Gamer One, and Happy New Year! Yes, and, Happy New uh, Year. Yep, and uh, welcome to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI, also known as Final Fantasy III here in the States. And joining me throughout this commentary, who who you may recognize from the Super Album Heroes, we have Gunnar Dine. Call him Dine. Thank you for having me. This is my all-time favorite game, and this is going to be fun commentary. I'm also let's playing a ROM hack of this game, and I'm about a little more than halfway through. Hopefully, I'll make more progress now that the new year started. Yep. Wonderful title yep. screen. Very, very atmospheric music. Yep. And um, Dine will be with me throughout the duration of this help piece. So. And I'm, yeah, I'm definitely expecting that there'll be a lot of voice acting in this one, and Stein's really good at it. Well, for some characters, yes. Yes, we have our opening. Long ago, the War of the Magi reduced the world to a scorched wasteland, and magic simply ceased to exist. A thousand years have passed. Iron, gunpowder, and steam engines have been rediscovered, and high technology reigns. But there are some who would enslave the world by reviving the dread destructive force known as magic. And look at me! You can see my cameo right there! I'm one of them! Hello! I'm the most important person in this game! <laughs> <laughs> I totally did not see that coming. Well, you have to watch it for him closely. Can it be that those in power are on the verge of repeating a senseless and deadly mistake? And I'll let the music come to its climax as we meet our introductory characters. Also starting a Squaresoft tradition that, as far as I'm aware of, still runs today in terms of a naming convention. There's the town. Hard to believe it, an Esper's been found intact there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. I'm doing this out of habit, by the way. Think it's still alive? Probably, judging from the urgency of our orders. But thus we have of technically Biggs and Wedge. It was Vix in this version. And this woman, this sorcerer, why is she here? How she fried 50 of our Magitek armored soldiers in under three minutes? Now, is it true that those uh, giant robot suits are Magiteks? Yes. Magitek uh. powered armor. Yeah, they had something like that in Mega Man X. Oh yeah, giant robots are a J Japan staple. Uh. And the ever-wonderful opening credits. The only time you'll hear this theme in the game, and I could listen to this all day. Yeah. Yeah, I still think it's kind of odd that they actually show credit at the beginning. Well, I don't remember if Final Fantasy V does it. Uh, Final Fantasy IV has a bit of a prologue text scroll. I'm only used to seeing uh, opening credits during movies. Actually, the opening credits did become a Final Fantasy tradition. Uh, especially during the PS1 era, all, all, all three of 7, 8, and 9 have long and uh, pre-rendered cutscenes with open credits. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think this was the last one to be uh, released on a Nintendo console. If I remember correctly. Uh, not counting remakes, yes. Because all of four, five, and six have Game Boy Advance remakes, which I highly recommend. Although four also has a PSP remake, which I will be let's playing, and also contains its sequel. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, so are you thinking about, like, doing that after you finish your uh, ROM hack of this game? Uh, yeah, my schedule on that hasn't been decided. I want to do a revised version of Secret of Mana with a, with a polished script compared to the official translation, but I have not found anyone to join me. I want it to be a three-person co-op. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask if it will be single or multiplayer. Definitely multiplayer. Because I heard that Secret of Mana does have a multiplayer option. Yes, it's still one of the best, still one of the best games of that era. E even though it's not in my top three SNES RPGs, it definitely in the top ten, maybe the top five. 
Yeah, so, and uh, do, you, do you think uh, Secret of Evermore was a big successor to Secret of Mana? Uh, kind of a spiritual successor. Uh, now that the credits are over, back to the action. Let's put her on point. No sense in taking any risk. Forward! Imperial Magitek armor! Not even Narsh is safe anymore! And we enter our first battle. Yep, we do. Now, as much as I love this game, it does not have my favorite soundtrack in the series. Ah. Which is, which is kind of unusual, because of course the soundtrack is fantastic. This is the first game OST I ever bought from a Nintendo catalog back in the 90s. It was like a hundred bucks for three yeah, sticks. You know, oh yeah, I was also told that, that the battle music here is similar to the music used in the Culex fight in Mario RPG. Uh, that's more of the, that's closer to the boss theme from Final Fantasy IV, but actually the ROM hack I'm playing has the battle and bo normal boss music from Final Fantasy IV. It's kind of a the the ROM hack is an homage to the classic Final Fantasy story, so it has elements from actually a, a, a whole lot of the games on it. Uh, yeah. In, in in regards to Final Fantasy VI here, this is this first area in the game is the only place one of the only places where you can. It, uh, use the Magitek armor. Ah. Yeah, except we all know that, like, um, this game was released two years before Mario RPG was. Mm-hmm. And, of course, since, since Square developed it, they couldn't help but help throw the Final Fantasy reference in. And you may notice that our little Magitek sorceress here has more options than the soldiers do with her Magitek armor, showing, showcasing her abilities a little bit. Her natural magic ability gives her, her the greater control and options. But for most everything in here, your fire beam is is uh, suitable. Ah. But as for who she is, we won't know until later. And yet the armor is too big to get it to some places. There is one extra battle if you try to take a side path, but you still can't get far. Mm. A new mechanic introduced for this game: the pincer attack. And you can also reverse it and surround the enemies. Auto automatic preemptive strike for you as well. And of course, if you hit an enemy in the back, it does more damage. Now, one thing I actually like about this game, uh, which we will actually see much later, that unlike other Mario, other RPGs I've played, this this one has HP in four figures. Uh. Yep. Uh, I think that started on the on the original Final Fantasy III, maybe. May definitely Final Fantasy IV. I don't remember if any of the ones before it got uh, into four any, figures. Any of the NES Final Fantasies? Right. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't played them in too long to remember. Ah. We must defend the mines! And new enemy, these Vomimus. We'll be seeing more of them later. Yeah. Now, there is one, one ability that the Sorceress has... That is that hits all enemies is Bio Blaster, but this is post commentating, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, luckily we don't see any uh, any enemies with five figure HP yet. Not for quite a while. Yep. But there are a lot of them. Yeah. In fact, there are some that that have even more than level score from Chrono Trigger. So I'm trying to remember who has the most HP out of every enemy in the game. Not, not the final boss. Yeah, I mean, beside from Kafka. Oh, spoiler. <laughs> well, well, uh, well. If if this is a popular game, then obviously it wouldn't be a spoiler to anyone who's already played it. Well, true, but there there may be people who are watching this for the first time. But yeah, they're have, gonna have no idea who Kafka really is until we get there. True. See, he, uh, guys, he, uh, my personal philosophy is. It doesn't matter if you have if you have spoilers. You can have the whole thing spoiled for you, but basically how it plays out is what makes it good or bad. Okay. Well, you got a point there. So kind of the journey is the reward sort of thing. And what one thing that really makes this game stand out above others is the customization of your party. Oh yeah, because this has has a lot of lot more uh, characters you can play as. A grand total of, of uh, 13. All right. 
or no. Yep. Plot, plot, plot. There, there are a couple of optional ones as well. Yep. I'll handle this. Stand back. And we all know ramming always works. Yep. Now this first boss is actually kind of a Final Fantasy staple for this period of time. Uh, it it actually started in Final Fantasy IV. But uh, re read the conversation. I'll explain a little bit more about it. A monster that eats lightning and stores the energy in its shell. So whatever you do, don't attack the shell. Oh yeah, I I got it, man. I I don't know. I. I mean, I understood not to attack it, but but later on you'll see that this this attempt is a prime example as to what'll happen if you do attack the shell. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is a staple that started in Final Fantasy IV and went through seven. Well, it skipped five, but the first boss is usually one that has two forms, and if it goes into its retreating form, you do not attack it, otherwise it has a nasty counterattack. And when I first played Final Fantasy IV, when I was like eight or nine, I just attacked, attacked, attacked the first boss on it. Kept getting wiped out and couldn't figure why until the actual owner of the game says, "Don't attack it when it's in its mist form." <laughs> and there goes the sorceress. Yes. Now the the party does have an option to heal in the Magitek armor, but I don't think there's a way of actually uh, reviving a passed out character. Yeah, I, well, actually, well, well, we can't now because we don't have the one item required to do it. And dead. Yep, and that, and as I said, that's exactly what'll happen if you try attacking the shell. Now, one of the nice things about this game is I don't, I don't remember if it started with five, but if you, if you, if you get a game over and restart at your save point, you will keep any experience that you got. Well, they did the same thing in Mario RPG. Mm -hmm. So if you get a game over and restart back at your save point, save. If you got into some battles and gained some more levels. Yeah, that that's actually a pretty good thing. They they should have done that in every RPG. No, some do, some don't. Yeah, this guy doesn't really have an, any specific elemental weakness, so just hitting it's him. Too bad this game doesn't have a new game plus. Nope, that wasn't introduced until a little later with Chrono Trigger. But admittedly, this is one of the easier Final Fantasies, so New Game Plus isn't overly necessary. Yep, so basically, like, if the shell's all that remains, just don't attack. Mm-hmm. Take the time to heal. Right. And on Biggs down there, he's glowing white because he has slow cast on him from the slime. And now the head's back. Best thing to use against this guy actually is the sorceress's tech missile. That'll do about 500 per shot. But again, fire beams work well enough on their own. Yeah. Well, you got it there because like I thought whelks were like sea snails, so which means that fire would. I thought, which means I thought fire would be weak. But one of the things I I remember is when we. When I first played this as a kid, we saw it stores lightning in its shell, and I thought, uh, well, let's attack it with lightning! <laughs> and I'm surprised nothing bad happened as a result of that. Wow, it didn't backfire at you? It didn't backfire. You can use lightning on the head and nothing happens. Right. Love this boss theme. In terms of soundtrack, that's probably my third favorite in the series, beaten out by four and nine. I mean, the boss music? Uh, the soundtrack as a whole, that's a point that I kind of got left behind a few minutes ago. And Welk is defeated. He glows red and dies. Something you see a lot of in Final Fantasy VII. And hopefully the dog's barking does not pick up on the mic. I can hear it actually. Oh, okay, so that's gonna get picked up in the background. Yeah, but it, but it's not that loud though. Oh well, we have visitors. I've got my door shut, so should remain quiet. Yeah, mine too. 
Yep, once you beat the boss, you progress forward and take out any enemies you run into. Alright, be back in a bit. And the other, the other thing about this game is, now that I'm talking to myself, uh, is the sprite work on the monsters begin to, to take a little more realistic tone. Just with the graphics capabilities of the, sorry, the sorry, Super NES. Sorry about that. I had to um, I I had to close the door next to me because I could hear hear the hear a background. Not a problem. And it's cutscene time. Uh, Try talk. His actual name is a lot longer, so they had to shorten it. <laughs> Something's up with the girl. The frozen creature began emanating an eerie light. Uh, it's coming from the creature wedge. Oh, well, you're dead anyway, so too late. <laughs> now, Wedge survives through Star Wars. Why do they always kill him off in the... <laughs> oh, so that's why we never see Wedge and Vex ever again. They die. Yep, they are toast. Uh, it's, just, it's just like the beginning of Finding Nemo, where we only see Coral for like a scene or two, and then she dies. Mm hmm And still very effective, very sad, very tragic scene. That the mat, the light from the Esper caused her armor to blow up. But now that you're in control, now that you're in control, there you go. Yep, one of the one of the keys on this game is always inspect every grandfather clock you find. Not, not doing that though. But almost every grandfather clock will have an elixir in it. Ah, okay. Uh, you're trapped in a cabin with a strange old man, and she's pretty good looking too, so <laughs> kinda scary. But he's a good guy. That's the only time you'll ever see that you'll ever see that graphic. It'll all come back in time. Amnesia always works that way in these games. A mysterious young woman controlled by the Empire and born with the gift of magic. And I'm not going to make the same stupid mistake I did in my first playthrough, where I did not realize she was a female. Renaming her Tori. Uh, her, her name in Japan is Tina, but the American translator just wanted something more exotic, so they renamed her to Terra, which of course is synonymous with Earth, which is also a connection with Aerith from FF7, because her name is similar to Earth. They they are not they're not the same they don't have the same talents basically. Alright, so now I should explain. See well since my name is Nate, I thought I thought in my first playthrough to name Tara Nate, but but I but I did not realize <laughs> that Tara was a female. Well the outfit's a dead giveaway though. <laughs> uh. No no that that begs the question, what is the female form of Nate? Well, I guess that doesn't matter now. Yeah. And we'll just walk right out into the open where we can be spotted. No surprise there. <laughs> that they have to find a way around. First normal battle without Magitek armor. Just hack and slash the enemies as they attack. Hack and slash? This isn't Dynasty Warriors. I know, but you can only use your sword at the moment. Okay, and that's where we stop for today. So until next time, this is Gold League Gamer 1 and Dine. Later, folks. Bye, guys.